today we begin a brand new episode where we begin to build the second story floor system. But it's dark, right? So you might be wondering what are we doing at 5 a.m., which is right now. And so we're headed to the site because uh, today we have also some guests. Well, they're not guests, but they're, we're gonna pay them. <laughs> The Kaufman crew, Kaufman construction crew, they're coming over. Hopefully they'll help us speed things up. So pretty excited about it, but we want to be ready for them so that they can start rolling right away. Hey everyone, my name's Tyrell. And I work for Kaufman Construction, and I'm really good at making everyone else look good. Hi, I'm Ethan. I'm with Kaufman Construction, and I'm the spook master. Always willing to go up and climb on things and walk out where nobody else dares. So, I'm Tyler DeHogue, and I'm a carpenter for Kaufman Construction, but I'm the new guy, so I get blamed for everything that goes wrong. I'm Derek Turner, I'm a carpenter for Kaufman Construction, and I am the one that blames Tyler for everything. Just as for anybody that's new for the project, I'd love to give them a quick brief of what's intended. We design absolutely everything on the computer beforehand. It allows us to do proper inventory management, like get the proper materials on site. And that's partly where, uh, where our name comes from, efficient of efficient build. We also uh, have everything predefined, and if we find any mistakes, we go to the engineer and talk them over, over Zoom rather than having to uh, rush on site. And this is one of the more complex floor systems, so it's important for us to show them and visualize how it's going to be looking. The Kaufman crew was here yesterday and they did an incredible job. It's insane how fast they moved. To be honest, uh, what they did, would have probably, they probably knocked out the first this episode in one day. But uh, at least we have some content, so let's go check out all the stuff they did. So they did uh, an amazing layout here for the upper floor. The, uh, the main bedroom is going to be up here, so it's uh, pretty cool. They took care of all the layout, they took care of the blocking required by an engineer. Um, the engineer required it to be uh, LVL blocking, but um, I think it'll be okay. I think a lot of the design of this house was meant for the house to be uh, built separately. Uh, and the reason for that is because this wall is actually a brace wall. Um, they uh, notice over here how they put the uh, rim board to the outside and then they added a second joist. So that gives it extra strength, so that's uh, awesome. What we had been doing is we had been adding blocking, which we will continue to add blocking at least for this final, um, for this initial uh, uh, layout, I guess. And then from there, we'll be taking care of the center blocking. Like I said before many times, the reason we add the blocking is because we don't want any bounciness at all on the floor because we have tile and any uh, deflection on cementious uh, materials uh, causes them to crack. Um, also, additionally, I know it is also not required uh, to have blocking here along the side, but we're going to be adding it and we're going to be adding uh, uh, web stiffeners as well. We ran out of web stiffeners yesterday, but um, we just want to be consistent with the rest of the house. That way we know everything was done to the extent that we wanted. And so, yeah, that's basically what we have. Uh, probably one thing we've been doing is we've been adding um, nails to the uh, optional connector holes. So we're probably going to be taking care of that stuff as well. So uh, yeah, let's just finish this up and um, they'll be here next week for installation of the soft floor. So that'll be a lot of work.
check out the work of the Kaufmans. Amazing. Uh, but one thing I wanted to point out that's very useful and very important is this steel beam, what we end up calling the Christian cross, is very important because there's a wall up here and then there's going to be flat roof that is visible from the inside. And unfortunately, from all the steel in the house, that beam back there ended up being a little bit um, cricket, I guess, a little bit not straight. So then again, so what are we going to do? What are we doing to fix it? So basically, we ripped the top plate over here to pack it correctly. This one is perfectly fine, so it matches the steel perfectly. Uh, but what we ended up doing is we, we grabbed a 24-foot LSL, and because we know they're perfectly straight, we ran it, aligned it to this particular guy, to this steel over here. And then we came over to this side, and then uh, basically we just continued running the line straight. Unfortunately, as you can see over here, uh, now we have a gap between the steel and the, and the top plate. And we ended up ripping that, that top plate to be flush on this side of the steel and, the, and be perfectly straight on this side. Uh, this is a tricky situation. Fortunately, hopefully we can fix it through drywall. Um, but uh, it will be tricky because now we have to rip this big size into like a smaller uh, diagonal to make it work. Uh, that's the, I guess, that's the price of construction, I guess, or... Before you start, make sure that you shake the adhesive for at least one minute. We were hoping the Kaufman guys would come over again, and hopefully they will still. Uh, they were busy and all that stuff, but we cannot stop. We're uh, assembling the subfloor. Uh, we gotta get this done as soon as possible. But in a previous episode for the main house, I think it was, I promised I would show you how to install a subfloor. And uh, this is really the time because after this, there's no more subfloor for, for a little bit of, of time. Um, that said, on the main house, we made a few mistakes. And uh, now that I've seen the Kaufman's work and uh, all their techniques, let me explain you what they did different that makes the difference for install installing a very nice flat subfloor. All right, so first what we did and the, uh, what is wrong is we basically installed the, the hangers first, and then we come over and then install the joists. Um, this typically works okay for TJI joists, but the ones that give us significant trouble are these LVLs because they are a little bit thicker or so there's something to them that they end up being a little bit taller. So the difference between us and the Kaufmans is they basically toenail the joists and the uh, LVLs to where they need to be. And then they are perfectly aligned and then they come over and install the, the hangers. So that's a huge technique difference that uh, I think it's worth mentioning. And uh, if they hadn't come, we wouldn't know it. So we would be making the same mistake over and over again. And so far the floor system is very nice and straight. Obviously now let's jump onto the uh, installation of the floor system. Uh, and for that, let's go to Marcella because she likes to read the instructions and when you use quality products, you might as well read the instructions and do it right. So here is a summary of Advantex instructions. So let's start with the adhesive. Obviously, we recommend using Advantex ad adhesive, but you can use any other adhesive that you want. But the important thing, it must be polyurethane-based or solvent-based. Do not use water-based adhesives. Now, if you use Advantex, when you apply it, it's going to be about half inch thick. It's a foam. And then it's going to come down into a gel that it's about uh, 3 eighths um, wide. Now, you need to select what uh, nail or a screw you're going to use. If you are using Advantex of floor 20, 23, 32 of an inch or uh, wider, then you need to use um, screws number nine. If it's, if it's uh, thinner, you can use screws number eight or you can use nails, but it has to be ring shank or shredded shank. Now, when it comes to the installation itself, the first thing is you apply the adhesive 
and then you put your subfloor and then you need to align it. Now, Advantage makes it easy for us with these little figurines. So the circles mean that your uh, joists are 16 inches center, the squares mean 24 inches center, and these diamonds uh, mean 19.2 uh, inches on center. Now, when you install it, you align it, now you need to install the screws. You need to do it line by line. You cannot do like the corners and then everything else. You do one line and then the next one and then the next one. And you should do this while the adhesive is still wet. You have about 20 minutes, but this can vary depending on temperature or uh, humidity. And a few more things. So, you need to leave a spacing of one eighth of an inch. On the long side of Advantech, you have the tongue and group that it's going to create that automatically for you. But on the short side, you need to create that manually. So here are two tips. You can use either a nail, a D, and create the spacing, or we have these spacers that make your life so much easier. You just put them, align it, and that's it. Two more things. So when you start, you start installing from the outside, uh, Advantech recommends starting with the tongue on the outside. And that is so that when you need to align it, if you have the flat side with the group, you can put a block and then you can hit it with a hammer and it's, going to not, it's not going to get damaged. Finally, if you need to cut a short piece, make sure that it covers at least two joists. And that's it. Those are Advantex instructions. Very well, so Marcel has now spoken about the instructions, so now let's talk about what we do, which is follow the instructions, but we do take uh, certain paths. Uh, so first off, the uh, structural engineer recommended the use of uh, nails and a three-quarter inch subfloor. Well, uh, we did a lot of research and whatnot, and we found that the most common reason for squeaky floors is the use of nails. So for that reason, we ended up using screws. Next, uh, we kept doing a lot of research. We have tile in this house and everything. So we wanted the most high quality, the most uh, sturdy subfloor that there was available. And uh, all the reviews came out and everybody said, one and an eight subfloor is the best. And uh, I must admit, it is the best. It is very sturdy. It feels very well, like a tank. You can jump on it. It doesn't have any bounce at all. It's probably also because of the blocking we add. That's great for the tile that we're going to be adding in the future because tile cracks and all that stuff. Next, we've learned some uh, downsides to the one and eight though. The first downside is that it's very, very heavy. Uh, you can, I mean, you, you must be a really strong guy to be carrying one around on your own. Uh, next, uh, it's a special order and you cannot order like one or two or three. You have to order an entire pallet. Uh, so in our case right now, I calculated that we would need three pallets. And uh, my guess right now is that we are very, very borderline. We might be running out of a uh, subfloor and uh, hopefully we won't be installing the little par parts at the end. But anyway, that those are a couple downsides. Overall, it's great. Um, another downside that was it's not necessarily Advantix or the subfloor itself problem was that um, due to our delays and whatnot, we had to keep the subfloor outside during winter. So that ended up uh, swelling a little bit the uh, tongue and, and we were having a little bit difficulty inserting it into the groove. So what we end up doing now, at least for this subfloor, is we run uh, a planer through the tongue and then that helps us run, uh, get it into it very, very well. When the subfloor was new, it was like butter. It was just like very easy and, and everything. Oh yeah, one last thing to remember that we also mentioned in a few episodes ago. Um, the subfloor is so thick, so hard that uh, using the Simpson um, tool, I don't remember the name, uh, it had a very difficult time, so we don't use it anymore. We use uh, an impact driver and it just works out pretty nicely. Uh, cool. So that's it. Now let's talk about an installation. Obviously, we have a lot of experience now after building an entire house of uh, subfloor. We have made a good uh, amount of mistakes. So my recommendations are um, put a chalk line. Put a chalk line. It doesn't take that much time. It's very important to put a chalk line because any, if you come to a point where you have a divergence in angles for as little as it may be, that angle will probably multiply if you make the mistake, or if you end up trusting the wrong thing, it will continue to multiply. So put the chalk line, trust the chalk line, go straight, and then make sure it's following the chalk line. 
that's the biggest advice that we have right now. The next advice I have for you is take the time to do it right. Um, unfortunately, in some parts of the subfloor, we were rushing, we were like trying to be like amazing and finish very quickly. And uh, it definitely showed on the quality. So uh, take the time to do it right. I know it takes a little bit more effort, but it's, uh, it's an important uh, step. And so yeah, with that said, um, we might as well continue installing that subfloor. And this is it, we are done with the floor system of the main house. Uh, you'll see some beautiful walls in the back, but don't mind them right now, it's a sneak peek for our future episodes. The only piece we're missing for the floor is this one right here, and that's on purpose, so this is going to be a cordless shower. We don't really like tops, so we're going with the special shower instead. So for that, we need to have the floor level um, lower so that you can have a flush entry. And we're not covering it because um, we still, we're still in the open, we don't want to get a pool of water in there. We'll, we'll close it once we are right in. And from there, I would say um, we're pretty happy with the installation. So first of all, the Kaufman crew did an amazing job in making sure that all the joists were flat and level, so it was much nicer to, to work with the subfloor. You can see also we took our time, so per Advantex instructions we followed all the gaps, everything is looking pretty, pretty nice and neat. Um, I would say we were pretty nervous because we went down to the very last piece of subfloor that we ordered. Um, I, I would say that we're making honor to our name again, Efficient Build, because the amount of panels we ordered, it's the amount of panels that we used. So um, I guess that's pretty much it. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. If you prefer to watch it in Spanish, come check us out at Los Efficient Builds. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.